is State Street. Good morning. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. And he said, be glad in it. Because some of us are, are gone. My heart is heavy. But my burdens are light. He's my friend. He's my savior. He's all I need. And it's all that you need. You all just lift up your hands and say, Lord, thank you. Thank you for these two candidates. My heart rejoices.
Good morning, Sister Good morning. Uh, Our scripture reading will come from the book of Psalms, uh, verses 3 through 7. And it reads as follows. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself, Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him, who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devises to pass. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his holy word. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Father, we thank you for this day. Father, we thank you for our last night's lying down. Father, we thank you this early rising, Father. Again, Father, you touched us with your finger of love, Father. And our eyes, Father, opened up. And I said, I looked again. You're good. And your mercy is forever lasting. Father, we come to lift you up, to magnify your name, to shout the word hallelujah, hallelujah to the king. Touch us, Lord. Touch these two right now, Lord. <laughs> you're, you're awesome, Lord. Your greatness. I can't find the words to say, Father, but just say thank you. We're all gathered together, Father. <laughs> By your, your greatness. We thank you. I don't have the words to say, Lord. But thank you. You've been so good to each and every one of us. In so many ways, Father. And we need you, Lord. I claim it in the name of Jesus. Father, you looked to the east and you looked to the west. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you most of all. Thank you for Jesus who hung bled upon the cross. And he died. He dropped his head. <laughs> But in three days, in three days, you get up with all power in your hands, Lord. We thank you in Jesus' name.
Well, it was early one morning, just about the break of day. Jesus came and touched me, and he washed all my sins away. I started running, who started shouting? Cause I had no time to doubt him. Oh, I early one morning just about the break of day Jesus came and touched me and he washed all my sins away I started running oh started shouting cause I had no time to doubt him oh I not know that as many of us were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father even so we also should walk in newness of life for if we have been united together in the likeness of his death certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection Romans 6 chapter chapter 6 verses 3 through 5 we baptize in accordance to the word of God, which tells us all Christians who have given their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ are expected to take part in this ordinance of conversion. It is a sign of surrendering, dying, and rising up with Christ. It is for those who believe and are willing to serve and walk with the Lord Jesus. It is for the Christians 
who have faith and have repented of their old ways. Take me to the water. Take me to the water. Be baptized. But the right I Nothing but the righteous, nothing but the righteous shall see God. My dear sister, the bridge starts to marry. And being obedience to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And upon the profession of your faith, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Street. Amen. 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 We should be hearts on fire right now. Yes, sir. And now, as we do every Sunday, we will do our mission statement. So if everyone will stand and repeat with me. Yes, 
State Street Baptist Church seeks to engage the sinner, equip the saints, and exalt the Savior. Our focus is to offer unconditional love with unrestricted service. We are dedicated to being witnesses for Christ with fellowship, truthfulness, and selfless service with the highest standard of excellence. We are also dedicated to embracing every person with the utmost level of dignity and respect in accordance with the word of God. God demonstrated diversity when creating us, yet saved us all equally. We believe in the triune God. As Christ was actively involved in his community, we believe we should be active in the local population as well as the world. Through a variety of programs and services, we will still cultivate a ministry of physical, intellectual, emotional, and spiritual well-being. Being obedient and honoring God's word, we understand our faith produces works. So with thanksgiving, prayer, and meditation, we will become a living sacrifice which is holy and acceptable unto God. And if you will remain standing for our Take Me Back selection, which is Pass Me Not.
morning, State Street. Morning. It's good to see everyone this morning. We like to say to those who are welcoming, who are visiting with us, we like to welcome you. Glad you're here with us, and know that next time you're in the neighborhood, you're not a visitor, and to always come into State Street Baptist Church and be one of us. Amen. Uh, this is uh, we have one announcement. It says, "Dear State Street Baptist Church family, with heartfelt appreciation." We are grateful and blessed by your presence and love during the illness and death of our beloved wife and mother, Sister Anna Harris Moore. Thank you for your cards, phone calls, caring concerns, and sincere prayers of God's comfort and guidance during this difficult time for our family. Your kindness is deeply appreciated and will always be remembered. Love, Dr. John A. Moore, Sr., Brother John A. Moore, Jr., and Sister Camille Moore. Amen. Amen. As a teacher, and I know sometimes some people say, Vanessa, nobody cares you're a teacher. Well, I'm proud to be a teacher, and as a teacher, when I see one of my students do good things, I just want to praise them. And Bridget was one of my babies at Greenwood High School, and to see that she has accepted that call to be a Christian disciple disciple you don't know how good that makes me feel and I know me mama is up there smiling her heart out so to the last thing I want to say is the devil's mad and that's okay All right, it's time for just some of our announcements. First of all, our Deacons of the Month, Ms. Deacon Sharon Blakey, Barry Blakey, Deacon David Odom, and Deacon John Moore. So if you have any questions or you need anything, please reach out to our Deacons of the Month. This week is Vacation Bible School. If you have not signed up, you have to sign up today, or Deacon Reggie is gonna get mad at you. So you have to sign up today. Vacation Bible School will be this Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 6 o'clock to 8 p.m. And our theme is Food Truck Party on a Roll with God. We will not have food trucks, but it is a food truck party. So please, if you have not signed up, please do so by the end of today. Or, again, Deacon Reggie is going to be at your doorstep. Also, on August 5th, we will have our Habitat for Humanity uh, event where we will be helping from 8 to noon or from 12 to 4 with helping build houses for Habitat for Humanity. So please sign up with uh, Sister Stephanie if you have not signed up. You will need to sign a waiver, but if you're interested, please come out and do that. Let's be members who are not just inside the church, but outside the church and working as well. On September 24th at 10 a.m., we will have a Greek college service. So for all Greeks, please wear your letter organization, your organization's letters. If you're Kappa, everybody knows who we are. But for everybody else, make sure you wear, you wear your letters too. So that way we can see you as well. That's for our AKAs and everybody else as well. We love you too, but I'm just saying. My, my pastor wants to make sure that the Kappas are well represented. But make sure you show up. If you know some undergrads who are, who are Greek, if you know people in the community, they didn't have to graduate from Western, but if they are Greek, come along. We're also going to have some other exciting things for that Sunday, but make sure you push that out to everybody. It's going to be Greek College Sunday on September 24th, so make sure you come out. Make sure you wear your letters. We also have movie night, Bible study. They started it this past week, so please come out. Good movies, good chance for Bible study. Make sure you come out and you fellowship. And this is something different. So it's not just the word, but it's watching a movie that sets up the word that we're talking about. So please come out every Wednesday of this month from 11.50 for the noon service and 5.50 for the 6 p.m. service. The Union District will have their annual session, Bringing, Glo Bringing God Glory by Investing in Our Future. That's the 17th through the 21st. It will be hosted at Oakland Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church. The moderator is Bap uh, Pastor Lee Fishback, so please come out and do that. Support the Union District because being a part of something outside of just State Street is important. So let's support our Union District. 
Our first aid and CPR training is going to be in September. So if you are not CP, CPA, excuse me, CPR trained and first aid trained, make sure you come out for that. We can be a blessing to others at any point at any time, so make sure you are CPR certified, and we will make sure it's taken care of through the church. The prayer line is Friday from six, at 6 p.m. All you have to do is call the number on the screen, 978-890-8900, access code 42101 for a prayer line. We all need prayer, and especially by the end of the week, we need a prayer, don't we? So what better way to do it than to get on the horn, call the prayer line, get on the line with God directly, and have a prayer. So call the prayer line on Fridays at 6 p.m. You can also follow us on social media, on Facebook, on Instagram, YouTube, uh, on, we got the Bread of Life podcast on Spotify. We've got our website, statestreetbaptistchurch.org. We haven't gotten on threads yet, but we're probably going to get on that too since everybody's running over the threads. So if you're not on threads yet, you might find us over there. I know a lot of people don't know what I'm talking about right now, but that's okay. That's okay. You'll hear about threads. <laughs> It, it's it's going to be the, it's the new Twitter, so. Next, we, <laughs> we will have our 60 Minutes in the Word online. So every Thursday, if you have not made it to in-person Bible study, please come online to the 60 Minutes in the Word, which will recap Bible study from Wednesday. So make sure you take part in that. We also have our children's church every Sunday morning from 10, at, starting at 1030 with Sister Butts and Sister Claypool as our instructors. So make sure if your children are coming, put them in children's church because they are doing a fabulous job with them. Every Sunday morning at 830, we have Sunday conversations with Pastor Warren. So this is our online version of Sunday school. So if you're not able to make it to the building, please go online and watch Sunday conversations. It will get you set up for morning worship, and it will get you ready for the rest of the week. Also, if you don't know how to give, there are plenty of ways to do it. You can go through our offering box, which is right outside the sanctuary, our square machine, our Givelify, our pledge. You can pledge to give every month, and you can decide if it's going to be the general fund. It can be restricted funding, and I tell you, a church does not run without giving. We have to give. We have to lead and show others how to give in order for us to get what we want. We can't get if we don't give. So make sure you give. And if you have any questions on how to give, please see a deacon. Please see the pastor. Ask anybody how, and we can show you how to give. And with that, I will turn it over to Pastor Warren. Thanks so much, Deacon Dearborn. I appreciate you on this grand Sunday morning. Peace and blessings unto you from God our and Jesus Christ, our Savior. It's such an honor and privilege for you to join us in this space and in this place as we do what? Embrace God's grace. And to those that are in the virtual sanctuary, I want to thank you so much for joining us on this Sunday morning. Remember to sign up uh, for a vacation Bible school and anything else that we have here at State Street Baptist Church or you heard Deacon Dearbone. Digging Richard Jackson will be at your doorstep. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Anybody ready for a word from the Lord this morning? A um, couple of weeks ago, SCOTUS, that we named the Supreme Court of the United States, handed down a ruling that does away with affirmative action. If you don't know what affirmative action is, then I beseech you, I beg of you to please go do some research and figure out how it affects you. Some of us in here have gotten what we have, the positions in which we are in, because of affirmative action. Now mind you, affirmative action should have never been needed in the first place. 
that the United States Constitution says that we believe that God has created each and every one of us as human beings. But then there was an unspoken clause that says not the black folks, for there were less than three-fourths of a human being. So through a series of civil rights, through John F. K. and Lyndon Bain Johnson, we have the affirmative action law. But as Brother Bailey would tell you, as being a law, a lawyer, sometimes individuals that when they put on that black robe, we have a little saying that says they get the black robe syndrome. And unfortunately, they have decided that minorities do not get to start at the starting line with everyone else. Well, John Roberts, you may sit on a court, you may sit on a bench, but we have a judge. You may rule over this land, but we have a judge who rules and super rules. So pass all the laws you want, but at the end of the day, you will have to answer to that judge as well. But for us in here who is hurt, saddened by what has taken place, don't be. I need you to meet me at the 27th Division of Psalm. Because David tells us what we are to do when evil approaches. Today I want to preach and teach using as a subject, in God we trust. in me he keeps home blessing me now he keeps home blessing me over and over again Oh, 
over and over again. What a gift we have to share his love. Independently we live on nothing but his grave. Yesterday is gone, but he hold out his hand. Tell us to come to him. He'll bless us if we only take a stand. Oh, he keeps on blessing me. Oh, oh, oh. oh yes, he does. Every day of my life, yeah. Oh, over and over and over again. Straight away, so many times before. There were so many times I didn't do right. But he gave me the strength to go on through the day. And he still watches over me each and every night. He keeps on blessing me. He keeps on blessing me. I could have been dead, sleeping in my grave, over and over and over again.
what I like about that song is that over and over again. Over and over again. Over and over again. Would you just help me this morning? Just over and over again. Over and over. When I don't deserve it. Over and over. When I messed up so many times. Over and over. When I should be dead. Sleeping in my grave. Over and over. Just keeps on blessing me. Over and over. Over and over. He just keeps on blessing. Is there anybody in the building this morning? Is there anybody watching online this morning? that just want to raise our hand of praise right now and just thank God for his unlimited grace and mercy. It's something, about, it, it, it's something about when you realize that you didn't do anything for it. You can't pay for it. You can't bargain for it. You can't buy it. But it's a free gift from God. Hey, is there anybody here I just want to give me just 30 seconds this morning of praising God for how far he has broke you. There are some things that some of us did in our 20s, our 30s, our 40s, our 50s, our 60s. Our seven, there's some things we've done where God had every right to get rid of us, but he didn't. He just continued to bless you over and over and over again. I don't care what the Supreme Court says. He's going to keep blessing us. Over and over and over again. Lord, have mercy. Let, let me get to this word. Let me get to this word today. Yeah. If you have your Bibles this morning, I need you to meet me at the 27th division of Psalm. I'm going to lift up verse one through six this morning. If you're physically able to stand, that I ask that you please stand for the reading of God's word. If you don't have your Bible with a hard copy of electronic, it's on the screen for you. Psalms the 27 states it like this. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Supreme Court of the United States, when the wicked came up against me to eat up of my flesh, my enemies and my foes, they stumble and they fell. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart, my heart shall not fear. The war may rise against me. But in this, somebody say in this. Within this, I will be confident that one thing I have desired of the Lord that I will seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord 
all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Here it is right here. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me <laughs> in his pavilion, in the secret place of his tabernacle. He shall hide me and he shall set me high upon a rock and now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. Therefore, I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord this morning for a short moment of time that I have with you on this Sunday morning. If you feel as if the church should not speak on political issues that involves the church and the people of God, then I ask for you to exit right now. Because you ain't going to like today's message. But for those of us who understand the troubles and the struggles that we go through, because of the oppressor, the enemy. And I ask for you to just give me a couple of moments of your attention, please. Because today I want to preach using as a subject, in God we trust. In God we trust. Let us pray, Lord, we come right down to say thank you. want to thank you, Lord, for everything that you have done, Lord. We will bless your holy name because we realize that in the time of trouble, Lord, you have hid us. You have kept us safe. Therefore, the enemy cannot get to us. It's, it's what Satan already recognized when he went to the Lord looking to find trouble. And when the Lord went to Job, recognized Job, Satan responded, it's because you have a hedge of protection around him. That's why I can't get to him. Lord, thank you for your hedge of protection. That no matter what the enemy does, Lord, <laughs> they can't get to us. They will test us. They will try us, they will attempt us, but Lord, they can't get to us. And for that, Lord, we say thank you. But Lord, we're asking that you open up our minds with head knowledge this morning, that trickle down to our hearts, that finds its way to our hands to be servants of you, Lord. So Lord, right now I ask that you remove me so they can see thee. You said in your word that if you be lifted up, you will draw all men. So hide me, move me out the way, Lord. But speak to me and speak through me, Lord. And let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto thy sight. O oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And the church all together say, Amen. In God, we trust. In 1961, President John F. Kennedy, Executive Order 109 25 used affirmative action for the first time by instructing federal contractors to take affirmative action to ensure that applicants are treated equally without regard to race, color, religion, 
sex, or national origin. It established the Committee of Equal Employment Opportunity. In 1964, the Civil Rights Act of 1964 was signed into law. This was landmark legislation prohibiting employment discrimination by large employers that 15 or more employees, whether or not they have government contracts. And it established the EEOC. In 1965, President Lyndon Bain Johnson issued Executive Order 11246, requiring all government contractors and subcontractors to take affirmative action to expand job opportunities for minorities. It established the Office of Federal Contract Compliance in the Department of Labor to administer this order. In 1967, President Johnson amended EO 11246 to include affirmative action for women. Federal contractors are now required to make good faith efforts to expand employment opportunities for women and minorities. In 1970, President John, the Labor Department under President Richard M. Nixon issued order number four, authorizing flexible goals and timetables to correct underutilization of minorities by federal contract. But then in 1978, is the first shift in the overturning of affirmative action. Because the US Supreme Court ruled in the regents of the University of California versus Bakke, it upheld the use of race as one factor in choosing among qualified applicants for admission. But at the same time, it also ruled unlawful that the university medical school's practice of reserving 18 seats in each entering class of 100 for disadvantaged minority students. Said you can't do it. But it's funny that they said you can't do it when it's something that we shouldn't even had to have in the first place. In 1996, California Proposition 209 passed by a narrow margin in the November election. Proposition 209 abolished, wiped out, all public sector affirmative actions programs in the state in employment. Clause C of Proposition 209 permits gender discrimination that is reasonably necessary to the normal operation of public education, employment, and contract. Basically, what the Cal state of California said is that if we don't think a woman can do this job, if we don't think a black person is smart enough to do this job, then we cannot hire them. In 1997, Proposition 209 enacted in California, which banned all forms of affirmative action in the operation of public employment, public education, or public contracting. 
June the 29th, 2023, in a historic decision, the U.S. Supreme Court on last Thursday effectively ended race-conscious admission programs at colleges and universities across the country. The decision reverses decades of presidents upheld over the years by narrow Supreme Court majorities. Chief Justice John Roberts, with a smirk on his face, wrote, many universities have for too long concluded, may I add wrongly, that the touchstone of an individual's identity is not challenges bested, skills built, or lessons learned, but the color of their skin. He wrote our constitution, which we know wasn't written for us in the very beginning, but he said our constitution. History does not tolerate that choice. The same constitution that says we are less than human beings. But I want to let you know, Chief Justice John Roberts, I'm greater than three-fourths. And if you are a minority sitting in this sanctuary today, if you are a minority that's in our virtual sanctuary, if you are a minority that watches this sermon later on this week, next month, next year, then you should have something to say about this ruling. You should have something to say about how schools can now say no to your children, grandchildren, great-grandkids, to my daughters because they started the race of life behind the starting line and was not born with a silver spoon in their mouths. And the only reason how and why they started ahead of the starting line is due to their race. So if skill set it's the thing, Chief Justice John Roberts, that should be used, then please take race off of a college application then. If race doesn't matter, then why is it needed on the college application? Why is race needed on a job application? If race doesn't matter, then why is it there? And it's hurt and devastated that I am and those of you who participated in the civil rights movement, I beg of you, not to put your trust in six individuals who sit on a bench, but the one who sits on the throne. Come here, come here, come here. Let me let you know right now. Don't put your trust in those six individuals who want to turn back the hands of time of this country, but sit, put your trust in the one who sits on the throne who is not governed by time at all. Because in this 27th division of Psalm, the time and the circumstances of this Psalm isn't clearly revealed, but it was written at a time when David was pursued by his enemies. And if you know anything about the life of David, it was one of great highs and great lows. It was days when he was on top 
And it was days when he was on the bottom. He had some good days. He had some bad days. He had some hills to climb. He shed a few tears. <laughs> Many times David enjoyed the mountaintop of victory. But he also endured deep valleys of despair. There was, however, an assuring constant in his life that no matter where he was in his life, he maintained a certain foundation. And that's his relationship with the Lord. Regardless of what the Supreme Court of the United States says, put your faith and trust in God. Keep it constant. Don't I know that the winds may blow and the sea may rumble, but if you keep your trust in God, because he's the only thing that's constant in the first place. And although it seems as if this country is moving backwards, we can take rest in the same assurance that David had when he penned this 27 Psalms. Because it is possible to overcome in an ever-changing world. Come here, let me talk to you this morning. Because the first thing that we need to understand is the hope in the Lord. It's the hope in the Lord. Because David reveals that he has a personal relationship with the Lord. He uses the pronoun my three times in verse number one. You, you, you see that? In verse number one, he starts out with a personal pronoun, with a relationship with the Lord. He says the Lord is my salvation. The Lord is my light. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? We have to have a foundation of hope in Christ. That's why Jeremiah said in the 17th chapter of Jeremiah in that 7th verse, he says, blessed is the man that trusts in God and whose hope is in the Lord. And I just want to know this morning, can I find at least three people who have claimed the Lord as their light, who have claimed the Lord as their salvation, who have claimed the Lord as their life, who has a possessive spirit that know that Jesus is mine. He's all mine. David had come a long way from his humble beginnings as a shepherd boy. He had faced giants, fought battles, and enjoyed God's hand of provisions. He was well aware that God has brought him to where he currently stood. And State Street, I just got to remind you this morning that we need to be reminded of what God has done for us, all that we are and ever hope to rest in the mercies and the provisions of God. Yeah, they, some of our best delicacies come from them being mean to us, giving us the slops, but we made chitlins out of it. Gave us the feet of the pig and we made some pig feet out of it. They gave us the head of the pig and we made hog head cheese. We made some neck bones out of it. That we took what they gave us as scraps and because the Lord had his hand over our lives, we are still here today. Is there anybody here that says, give me your scraps? scraps and watch what God will do with it. Yeah. 
David said, the Lord is my light. He had delivered him from a life of darkness and was guiding his steps. David had been redeemed from a life of condemnation to a life of forgiveness in the Lord. He said God was also his salvation. That alone is reason why we should shout in hope this morning. <laughs> we have been saved through the blood of Jesus and received salvation in and through him. And I'm glad that my hope an eternal destiny doesn't depend on what this world provides. I'm glad this morning that my hope and my eternal destination does not lie in the hands of a court in Washington, D.C., but that my hope and my joy lies in the hands of a God who rules and super rules, that sits high and he looks low. That that's why that we can sing the songs that we sing, that this joy that we have, the world didn't give it to me. And if you didn't give it to me, then you can't take it away. Yeah. The Lord is the strength of my life, David says. He had been in many, many hostile situations. He had a king who stalked him. He had a wife who couldn't understand his worship. But God has supplied the strength to overcome even his indiscretions with Bathsheba. Aren't you glad for his light in your life? Aren't you glad in the moments of weakness there is strength in the Lord? We've all had those giants come against us that we couldn't defeat. If you're not careful, you will begin to feel defeated. You will feel as if you have no hope. You will start to feel as if you have no choice but to go backwards in time. But Paul said it like this, in my weakness is his strength shown. Come here, come, come here this morning, that in my weakness, when I feel like I can't do it, then I just hand it to the one who can. When I feel like I can't go any further, I just give it to the one who will pick me up and carry me on. When I feel like I don't have a choice, I turn my attention, I turn my focus to the one who makes all decisions. I will put my trust in God. So David, David, David says it like this, y'all. He says, Even the Supreme Court, Donald Trump, Clarence Thomas, Samuel Alito, Neil Gorsuch, Brett Kavanaugh, and Amy Coney Bryant. When? He didn't say not if. He says when. So he's letting you know they're coming. He didn't say if. He says, when they come. He says, when the wicked. He's letting you know that it is for certain that they're coming. They're coming for our rights. They're coming for the women's rights. They're coming for voting rights. He said, when they come, they stumble. Oh, y'all don't know when to shout. He says, when they come, when they're marching against you, when they're coming against you, when they're passing laws and legislation and executive orders that keeps you down, when they come, guess what's going to happen? They're going to stumble and they're going to... 
David reveals that times when defeat seems certain, the enemy had invaded his life with one thing in mind, destroying him. They had the one thing in mind. See, see, some people will come together. They don't like each other. But the only thing they have in common is you. He, they don't like each other. They wouldn't hang out with each other. They don't talk to each other. But when they focus on you, they'll come together. And David says that in those times when defeat seems certain, his enemies stumble and fail. That God had placed a hedge around him in his time of need. Aren't you glad this morning that you got a hedge of protection around you? That when they come against you, that they will stumble and fall. That he has built a protection around you. He allowed times of testing and trials, but the enemy can only go so far. And there will, I, I got to give it to you, there will be times when we feel as if hope is lost. But God can cause our enemies to fall at our feet. He has set a perimeter that Satan cannot cross. And if you are secure, when the, then the boundaries God has set, hell may rage, but it will not overcome you. I believe that we got some Bible readers in here today that you remember in the text that the text says when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord will raise up a standard and give me time to escape. Somebody look at the neighbor and say, the Lord did it. The Lord did it. That when the enemy comes, the Lord intervened. And we must learn to trust the Lord in our times of need. That we'll never obtain victory if our faith and trust don't rest in Jesus. There's an old song, I told y'all where I'm from, east side of Nashville, Tennessee, that I grew up at St. Matthew's Missionary Baptist Church, 2412 Osage, in the heart of North Nashville where the pastor is none other than W.B. Armstrong. And there was a time when we had a mother's board the old ladies of the church have on their white stockings and their long white dresses. And if you didn't have on no stockings, they'll say, baby, you need to go put on a slip. Somebody know what I'm talking about. And we had a mother in the church that has gone home to be with the Lord. Her name was Mother Alice Harney. And Mother Alice Harney had a song that said, in times like these, you need a savior. In times like these, you need an anchor. <laughs> so be very sure, oh, be very sure that your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. <laughs> this rock is Jesus. Yes, he's the one. This rock is Jesus, the only one. So be very sure, oh, be very sure that your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. Put your trust in God. Hold on to the firm foundation. There will be times of difficulty and pain. But God is bigger than the battles we face. Yeah. David said, though in hosts, 
should encamp against me. My heart shall not fear. The war should rise against me. In this, I will be confident. In this, I'll be assured. In this, I'll remain positive. In this, I'll remain cool. In this, I'll remain composed that when the enemy rise against me, I'll be level-headed. I'll be together. I'll be at ease. <laughs> because here it is in verse 4. One thing have I desired. What David is letting you know that he's not focused on what the enemy is doing. His attention is not on what the enemy is saying. His attention span is not focused on what his foes and enemies are doing. His attention is on the Lord. Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. He says, one thing have I desired of the Lord that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord. All the days of my life. And not only am I dwelling in the house of the Lord, but I'll behold the beauty of the Lord. And to inquire in his temple. David was a man after God's own heart. He wanted a heart and life that pleased the Lord. Basically, when we remain hopeful, then our heart can heal. When you remain hopeful, your heart can heal from the hurt. Three things David points out and we're going home. Within the heart, there will be wisdom, worship, and wonder. Within the heart, there will be wisdom, worship, and wonder. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek it. The one thing David desired is a continual relationship with the Lord. It would have been easy to desire a victory over his foes and his enemies. It would have been easy for David to say, well, give me a larger kingdom, more wealth, more power. But David remained focused in the right direction. He had come to realize that his relationship with the Lord was the most important thing in his life. Not the Supreme Court ruling, not a racist Donald Trump, but my relationship with God is what matters in times like today. And we must get to a place in life that God is our desire. He cannot take a back seat. He must be the priority and the focus of our lives. We cannot seek him on Sundays only, but we got to seek him Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, that we got to go to sleep with Jesus. Because if we go to sleep with Jesus, then we'll wake up with Jesus. We got to constantly have him on our minds. There's a song that said, don't worry, be happy. Can I give you the Courtney M. Warren version? Don't worry, just worship. All right. 
Don't worry. Just worship. Don't worry about the Supreme Court ruling. Just continue to honor God. Continue to trust him. Continue to believe in him. And every second you get, you let them know that God is where I place my trust in. Yeah. He said to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. It's actually nine different definitions for the word inquire. It's to inspect, to admire, to seek, and to consider. David entered the house of God with a heart of praise and wonder. He wanted to behold. He wanted to look upon God's beauty and his temple. And we'll never enjoy victory without worship. We'll never get to the place that worship isn't necessary. It is the most important activity that we engage in all week. And unfortunately, many have lost their awe of God, their respect of God. Many have forgotten what he's done for them. The church is no longer a place of godly fear and holy reverence. Each time we meet, we need to be mindful of who he is. We need to consider the power and glory of the God we serve. I got to be honest with you. I don't know everything. I'll never understand why he loved me so much. But I never want to lose my affection and wonder for him. I may not get why he decided to send his son. I may not understand why he continues to bless me over and over again. But because he does, I will continue to praise him. I'll continue to worship him. I'll continue to be a living sacrifice. And David closes with this. The hope, the heart, and the hiding. David had been blessed with many hiding places from his enemies. And there will be times when we need to slip away to our hiding place in the Lord. And that David says that this hiding place is a protected place. That for in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. The pavilion was a tent that was in the middle surrounded by the soldiers that whenever the enemy rise up against it, they first got to go through the soldiers to get to the tent of the king. And I believe that there's somebody here this morning that's thankful to be in the house of the Lord where there is protection, where you are protected. Can I get a witness this morning that we are called to defend ourselves, but simply take a rest because we're surrounded by the host of God. I believe that somebody will say that we got angels watching over us, uh, that he will try, uh, the enemy will attempt, uh, but you got a hedge uh, 
of protection. Uh, but David says uh, not only uh, is the place uh, a protected place, uh, but it is uh, a precious place. Uh, it's a secret uh, of his tabernacle. Uh, it's the holy of holies. Uh, it's where God is present. Uh, it was a place uh, that few uh, had the right to enter. Uh, but we, uh, as children of God, uh, has access to uh, to the king, uh, we have access uh, to God the Father, uh, and we can walk together, uh, we can talk together, uh, we can converse together, and while we're talking, uh, while we converse, uh, while we're walking, uh, while we're talking, uh, he just keeps on uh, blessing me uh, over uh, and over. Uh, and over uh, and over again. Uh, but David says, uh, not only uh, is it a protected place, uh, not only uh, is it a precious place, uh, but it's a preferred place. Uh, he says, uh, I'm going to set you uh, upon a rock. Uh, this was a place uh, of stability. Uh, the one uh, that stood above the battles, uh, that raged below uh, with a great vantage point uh, of the battle. Uh, and the, as the enemies advance, uh, he says uh, that you uh, will be set uh, upon the rock. Uh, and that rock uh, is Jesus. Uh, it won't move. Uh, it has a firm foundation that if you uh, put your trust in God, uh, you will have some stability. Uh, no matter what laws are passed, uh, regardless of what the legislation says, uh, what matters uh, come out of that over office, uh, you got a king uh, of every king. Uh, you got a lord uh, of lords. Uh, but then, uh, I like this part right here uh, that David says uh, it's not only uh, a protected place, uh, it's not only uh, a precious place, uh, it's not only uh, a preferred place, uh, but it is uh, a prominent place uh, because in this prominence uh, I'll be able uh, to lift up my head uh, and I don't have to walk in shame. Uh, I don't have to walk in sorrow. Uh, I don't have to walk in grief uh, because the Lord uh, is with me. Uh, his rod uh, and his staff, uh, they comfort me uh, that when I walk uh, through the valley uh, of the shadow of death, uh, I'll fear no evil because you are with me. You will prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And I sit at this table and I can enjoy meal. I ain't got to worry about the enemy coming against me and grace and mercy and goodness shall follow me all the of my life and I'll dwell I'll dwell I'll dwell I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever can I close this like an old school Baptist preacher this morning that when you're lonely and your heart is filled with despair you got to remember that God cares God cares for you uh, when you're in doubt, uh, can't find your way out. Uh, he will, uh, he will uh, see you through. Uh, if you uh, just call uh, on the name of Jesus, uh, he'll help you. Uh, he will guide you. Uh, he will protect you. Uh, is there anybody here? Uh, is there uh, any mountains? Uh, you can uh, tunnel through uh, are there uh, any rivers uh, that seems uh, uncrossable uh, can I let you know uh, that God 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 
will see you through. Uh, Y'all know him, don't you? Uh, he's the rock of ages. Uh, he's a heavy load sharer. Uh, he's a burden bearer. Uh, he's a bridge over troubled water. He's a roof over your head. Uh, he's food on your table. Uh, he's clothes on your back. Uh, he's shoes on your feet. I don't care uh, what the Supreme Court says because uh, I serve a God uh, who sits high uh, and looks low. Uh, I serve a God uh, that loves me so. Uh, there's an old school song uh, that we used to sing in the children's choir that says, Jesus loves me. This I know uh, for the Bible. Uh, Tell me so, uh, little ones, uh, to him belong. Uh, they are weak, but we are strong. Is there anybody here uh, that know uh, that God uh, loves you? Uh, he loved you so much uh, that he sent his only begotten son through 40 uh, and two generations. Uh, he healed the sick, uh, raised the dead, uh, fed 5,000 uh, with two fishes, uh, five loaves of bread, uh, and one fry. They led him uh, up a hill called Calvary. They hung him high. They stretched him wide, uh, and he died. Uh, didn't he die? Uh, he died. He died uh, to the sun refused to shine. He died to the moon dripped in blood. He died to the grave gave up their dead. He died until uh, the Roman soldier said, uh, Surely, surely, uh, surely, uh, surely, uh, this must be uh, the Son of God. I wasn't there, but they tell me uh, that he hung his head uh, and he died. Uh, and they took him off uh, of that old rugged cross, uh, put him in uh, Joseph's new tomb uh, where he stayed there all night Friday, all day Saturday. But early that Sunday morning, he got up, he got up, he got up. He got up with all power, all power, all power, all power. All power, all power, all power, all power, all power, all power, all power. They think they got some power. But we are aware of the one who has all power. And one day, they're going to have to answer to him about the things they do to us. But what we can do in the meantime is keep our trust in God. Because he's the only way that we'll be able to make it. He's the only way that we will make it. And this is what our ancestors knew, to keep their trust in God. Despite coming over here against their will, families separated, sons and daughters sold off, regardless of all that, God of being beat and lynched. We made it. We made it. And we made it because of where we put our trust. If you keep your trust in God. So Robert, if you happen to see this message, one day you got to come off that bench 
you got to answer the one <laughs> that sits on the throne. Pray to God that you get your heart right before you meet him. I pray to God, and that's what we're going to do for you right now. And maybe there's somebody here in this sanctuary or in our virtual sanctuary that realizes that you haven't been doing things right. That you have been passing your own laws within your own self of hurting people, mistreating people. Maybe there's somebody here who is about to crumble under the pressure because you was counting on that seat for me. You was counting on that job and you feel like all your hope is gone but I come to let you know today that in the time of trouble he'll hide you that when the enemy comes against you they're gonna stumble and they're gonna fall Clarence Thomas, you're going to stumble and you're going to fall. We stand all over the building, the doors of the church are now. You can make it. I promise you, but you got to know where to keep your focus on. It's easy to get distracted in the world because that's what the world wants you to they want you distracted. They want you. But you keep your focus on God. He's here for you with open arms. His tent is waiting for you to come and join him in the Holy of Holies. You have access to him if you put your trust in God. So, I visited Washington, D.C. about a month ago, and I saw all the sites, the Lincoln Memorial, the War Memorial, the Vietnam Memorial, saw the White House, the Pentagon, we saw all of that. It's beautiful. Oh, it's beautiful. It looks good. But if we keep our focus not on Washington, D.C., but if we want to see something beautiful, it's the beauty of the Lord. That how he brings you over, how he carried you, that's all. You should desire to be with the Lord. Because that's the only way we're going to make it. So don't let these six judges get to you. They're going to have to answer for what they did. They're going to have to answer. They're going to have to answer for what they did. How they mistreated people. How they put one race above the other. They got to answer for that. And you don't want to be in that room when he does. But you keep your trust in Jesus. So it's in God we trust. Let us pray, Lord. We love you. We praise you. We honor you. We worship you for everything that you have done. But Lord, right now, we're going to send a special prayer for those six judges that's on that bench that feels it's within their right to hurt other people. We learned in Sunday school what a Pharisee really was. There was a religious set of individuals who had this superiority complex. Their self-righteous think they can't do any wrong. 
Clarence Thomas don't realize he got to where he is today because of affirmative action. That he dishonored the legacy of Thurgood Marshall and everything that he stood for. But he'll have to answer one day, Lord, for what he does. We're just praying, Lord, that he lets you into his heart. That he can read what David said in Psalm 51. That he can fall on his knees and say, Lord, create in me a clean heart. And renew within me a righteous spirit before it's too late. Because Jesus said, no man works when it's dark. But he only works while it's day. While it's day, Clarence Thomas, repent. John Roberts, repent. Amy Coney Bryant, repent. Brett Kavanaugh, repent. Repent right now for what you've done. But for those, Lord, that's feeling the pressure right now of this ruling, let them know that if you bring us through 200 years of slavery, you can bring us through this as well, Lord. That if you can free your children from an oppressive Pharaoh after 400 years, allow the Red Sea to be split and allow them to walk across some dry land. That if you can do that for them, we know what you can do for us. So as we leave this place, but never from your face, understanding that it's by God's grace that we've made it this far, that we'll be okay. Keep our hearts intact, Lord, and let us know, Lord, that you got us. You got us, and we protect it. So, Lord, as we end this prayer and leave this sanctuary, keep it on our hearts and our minds that in the time of trouble, we don't have to hide ourselves because you will hide us. Now the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make it your perfect and every good work to do his will. Working in him that is well pleasing in his sight. God whom be glorified through Jesus Christ. And the church all together say, amen, amen, amen. You may go in peace.